What's up, everybody? Richard Dolan here for a courageous conversation. Well, I'm in today. You're right. There's no going back. How do you do? You feel the weight of that that desire? Yeah, I have been there for a while. Story still being written, and you cut the story short. As they say, I'm playing with house money. They said, Ah, neo fascist. You can't imagine, Richard. I've heard everything now. But I'll tell you what, you ain't never buying your time back. Value your time. Nothing can humiliate me. I've already done that. He said, You taught me there was more to life than pain, and that kind of opened the door for thousands and thousands of kids. Like you just show up, no matter what. This is a, an opportunity to, to kind of delve into yourself and actually pull out what you might have in there. It forced me to think about life after basketball. And it's funny because people need to laugh. You just pass it through, brother. Once you start a courageous conversation, there ain't ever going back to an ordinary one. Today, the only thing you'd recognize today are classrooms. And so I feel like there's one thing that I would add to it would be having classes on how to think. Class teaches you what to focus on, what to study, what to read, what to remember, what to think, but not how to focus. You going to your children saying focus or concentrate, it's like going to a child and saying, play the ukulele. For someone who's never taken a class, we've never taken a class called Focus 101. There was never a class called Remembering. I always thought it should have been the fourth R in school, reading, writing, arithmetic, obviously spelling's not one of them. But what about retention? What about recall? What about uh, remembering. Socrates says learning is remembering. And so that would, that would be uh, my contribution. I wrote this book. If the book really is a, a owner's manual for the most important technology. You know, we update our phones, we update our apps more than we update the most important device, which is the human mind. And we've discovered more about the human brain more in the past 10 years than the previous thousand years combined that we found is we're grossly underestimating our own capabilities. And so what if we were born with incredible superpowers, but we're never really shown how to use them? And that's really my mission is to build better, brighter brains. Yeah, I had a massive thought, but I forgot it now, given what you <laughs> I'm totally kidding with you. I'm just, I have another R, raptured. I mean, folks, if you're just dialing in, if you're just tuning in from anywhere around the world, we're here with Jim Quick, uh, the world's leading authority, the most disruptive, innovative, uh, the thought leader on how to really use your brain, use your superpower, author of the most recently uh, released book, Limitless. Uh, Jim, tell me something. Given that we're now in very strange times, some would call it a pandemic, uh, some would call this an incredible time for, for mankind, given the crisis and the rising tide of uncertainty, What's, what's the one thing that people should be focusing in on themselves to learn, to expand, to grow or better for themselves to really come out the, uh, of, the, uh, of the other end better and intact? You know, I really think that the metaphor is that of a butterfly. You know, and while the beauty is in the butterfly, the growth happens in the cocoon. And you might feel like you're, you've been cocooning this year. You're physically distancing yourself. Uh, but it's it's that creature's desire and its will to come out of that cocoon that it builds the strength in its wings to be able to soar to new heights. So we all can make choices while we are cocooning to become a kind of wiser, smarter, and, and stronger. One of the choices I talk about these different things: the clarity. A wonderful time. Solitude is a wonderful time to self-reflect. And asking yourself, sometimes when you're going a million miles an hour throughout the day, achieving, you don't check in to say, "Am I going in the right direction?" Asking yourself uh, questions like, what's most important to me in my life today, you know, in my, in, in my relationships, in my career, in my impact? And another question to ask, what do you instill those values are, are my actions truly aligned with those, those values? Meaning, how many of you feel like, and I love reading the, the chat here, how many of you feel kind of burnt out? And some people say that they feel burnt out because they're doing too much. But often I find that it's not because we're doing too much. Often you feel burnt out because you're doing too little of the things that make you come alive. The things that really light you up, the things that you value the most. You know, and I think two of those values for all of us, you know, here to just feel fulfilled is these growth, is, is to be able to develop, using this time as, as a way to, uh, to increase our capabilities, to learn. You have a to-do list, but you have a to-learn list. You know, I believe that a lot of the photos you see with me with, with Bill Gates, you know, and the, these individuals, we bonded over books. You know, the love of reading, leaders, leaders are readers, right? And but what's on your to do, what's on your to learn list, you know, to be able to expand your, your capabilities. I really think the biggest mistake people are making right now is 
Do not downgrade your dreams to meet this current situation. Do not shrink your dreams to meet this current situation. Instead, upgrade your commitment, upgrade your skills, upgrade your, your competency to be able to meet your dreams, your destiny. No, I love that. I love that. I mean, that's that's so huge. I mean, one one of the things I might be um, I might be letting something out of the box a little bit, but um, but I know that one of your dreams and aspirations was to publish a book, and it's a stellar New York Times bestseller. I mean, another is uh, you know to be a father, to to, mm-hmm. to have a, to have a child. And tell me, if we were to snap a finger, speaking of genies, and out comes the the child of choice, and he or she is healthy and blessed and beautiful thanks to his mother, you know, tell me, what are some of the key things you'll want to teach your child that is so important out of those first critical days, months, and years ahead? You know, I'm, I'm curious in the chat, how many of you have children? They put in the chat. How many of you once were a child? <laughs> you put that in the, in the chat. Children are, are amazing because who are the fastest learners? They're, they're children, right? And the, part of the reason is because they play and they're not fearful of making mistakes. I think the the thing that I would instill into a child, well, actually, speaking of superheroes, um, years ago, I got to introduce two of my like, modern day superheroes over, together over dinner. It was Richard Branson and Stan Lee. Not Stan Lee, but Stan Lee, right? The creator of all my favorite superheroes, Avengers and, and Spider-Man and the X-Men. And I, when we're in the car, I asked him, Stan, you created this pantheon of heroes. Um, who, who's your favorite? And he was like, he paused. I was like, yeah, who's, who's your favorite? He said, Jim, it's Iron Man. And I was like, that makes sense. He's like, Jim, who's your favorite superhero? And he has this big uh, Spider-Man tie. And I was like, it's Spider-Man. Without a pause, he goes in his iconic voice, with great power comes great responsibility, right? You've all heard that. You don't even remember when you first heard it. And maybe because I had these, these accidents and I, sometimes I reverse things when I hear it or read it. And uh, I heard something different. I was like, Stan, you're right. With great power comes great responsibility. And the opposite is also true. With great responsibility comes great power. When we take responsibility for something, we have great power to make things better. I actually have, I don't show people this, but on the top of my office, I have this, this actual portrait of Stan Lee. And it's made, I was given, it was given to me by Stan and it's completely made, he's a big kid. He's the youngest old person that I, that I knew. And he had two passions. His first passion was his, was his wife. And his second passion was he would still go to work nine to five, Monday through Friday, because he loves storytelling. But he, that, that that's actually made out of candy because he loves candy also as well. And, um, and but I do that as to serve as a, a gentle reminder, of the power of responsibility. That, you know, and that's what I would instill into a child. That if, if I could talk to that nine year old boy who was struggling all that time, that was being bullied, that was unsure of himself, I would say that you are 100% responsible for your life. You know, your past might have shaped you to who you are, but you're responsible today and moving forward in the future. And I feel like when we claim that ownership, you know, that, that radical ownership, and we have great power to be able to influence it, that ultimately, we, all of us here, we are thermostats, we're not thermometers. If you think about the metaphor of a thermometer, a thermometer, what's its only function? A thermometer just reacts to the environment. And certainly we react to politics, we react to the economy, we react to how people treat us, the weather. But all the studies done on happiness show that the happiest people, they find the locus, the lo- location of control inside, that they are a thermostat. A thermostat doesn't react to the environment, a thermostat engages the environment, right? intelligently and then it sets a temperature just like you set a vision a goal you know a dream and then the environment reacts to it so so we are responsible and that that's what i would want to instill in, in my child i love that man and i mean what a great analogy what a great metaphor really because the thermostat's a, a self-governing tool and it's all about you know what temperature you're setting your life at um for doing jim i'm so uh, proud to call you a friend i'm so grateful to have met you all those years ago I mean, what we've learned today is that you converted the spilt fuel from an incident and performed your best personal alchemy. You went from being vulnerable and moved to being invincible and now have inspired and have taught the world how to be invincible too. I mean, you could have stopped at correcting your own course of life. You could have actually easily, easily, by all means necessary, feasted on the joy and the fruits of your labor alone on an island of one, but you knew that wasn't enough. 
I find you to be one of the most generous human beings I've come to know. And I also know you're just getting started. And that's why I'm totally, absolutely in love with who you are, what you're up to and what's going to come next. Uh, so from the bottom of my heart, uh, uh, from my home to yours, uh, thank you so much for letting me into your home. Thank you for letting all these folks, letting uh, you into theirs and they into yours. Uh, I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and I know there's gonna be a lot more of Jim Quick coming quickly.